Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Timberborn, where last time we used like 20,000 explosives to dig to the center of the world. Well, at least we tried to, except we can't. There is a limit. So we dug, we dug, we dug, and we dug. And then it's like, nope, it's too low. Fair enough, video game, fair enough. And now we'll be turning this into a kind of crazy beaver city thing very soon, but not today. Because today we're gonna be checking out the new Timberborn update, which has added in a ton of cool features in the new experimental build. And if you're excited for that, remember to leave a like. And of course, with any update, things have broke because things have changed. We have a bakery here, which is all confused. Why? Because there's new recipes. There's bread and there's cat crackers and old pastries, what? Because there's wheat, there's maple syrup. Brother, a beaver game with maple syrup? Canada simulator? Let's go! That's awesome actually, I'm so excited. But what's this one? Fuel log, it's a log, <laughs> crazy. Okay, so there's the crackers and then the pastries, gotcha, but what's this? Cattail flour? What is a, a cattail? What is that? Is I think I actually know. Yeah, it's like a weed. It kind of looks like one. And here it is. It requires a aquatic farmhouse. So these grow on the water. And then there's spatter dock. Designate an area for planting. Need the farmhouse thing. Takes 12 days. What do you even do with the spatter dock? I don't know. There's a lot of new stuff. I don't know what exactly is going on here. But there's the aquatic farmhouse. Employ specialized farmers that can plant and harvest water crops. Yeah, it sounds cool. Oh, look at that. It's a neat little triangle building. Well, let's not make it in the Grand Lake Sippy. Lake Sippy, very busy place. Let's go over, let's go over here. Oh, I was gonna say, place it in the water, but how does this even work? Eh, YOLO, we'll place it there, and then we'll find out. Oh, and before everything starts building, oh my goodness, the beavers are so confused. No, stop, make the wheat. We're still running on bread, non-experimental stuff, just normal game things. Please, we cannot run out of food again. Oh, but wait, even at the grill, there's a selection? So grilled potatoes and grilled chestnuts. Oh, and spatter dock, that other thing we were seeing. So we grill that? Interesting. Potatoes, it looks like it got a buff too. It's one potato plus a bit of log and you get four now. Before you got three, so potatoes are better. Interesting. Okie dokie, we got it. Our very first aquatic farmhouse. Prioritize, same deal, spatter dock, we have the cattail things, harvesting, planting. Yeah, so the same thing as a farmhouse. Okay, and then we just grow this stuff literally on the water. Can it be flowing water? It would seem so. I imagine in a drought though, if the water ever goes away, that's like GG. And I see that this goes to the ground water. <laughs> I like the groundwater, but you see it like sits on the ground beneath the water. Well, it doesn't really seem to matter because they are literally not planting things. I, I have a weird theory though. What if we actually have to make this farmhouse in the water itself? So like we'd have to place it like here and then the beavers would swim into it. Like it allows us to do this. Can we do that with other things? Probably not, right? Okay, that makes even less sense. We could have been building in the water this whole time. Okay, no, this isn't it. This this ain't the play. But perhaps the beavers need to be able to get into the water. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Using like seven IQ right now. And I realized another thing. We have these things that are on the floor, the water base, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, the ground of the river. And then we have the spatter dock. And I bet, oh, I think these would be floating on top of the water. So these would be better in deeper water. But that doesn't seem to be the case. And also, this shouldn't even matter either. They should be able to build down like this beaver is. This beaver can reach the stairs, why can't they reach the other stuff? Why? Oh, but it works! What? What? Okay. And now the beavers are swimming around! That- oh. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I gotta admit, that's pretty cool. So then we have to build stairs over here then. Okay. Do we have to build stairs to like, the ground? Exactly? Guess we're about to find out. And in the meantime, let's build another one of these. And also with the stairs done, the beavers weren't planting these, so these I guess have to be at the same level. Yeah? Are you gonna are you gonna plant now? Looks all good, right? Spatter dock. Planting. Doesn't look like they vibe with that. But then what if we go to the one deep water over here? 
Oh yeah, immediately they went to this now. And they're planting it. So then all the water crops have to be in water that is only one layer deep. Like it can't be in a pit of water like this. Beaver's just like, nah, gotta be in one tile deep. And that is actually awful. Because unless you have proper dams and things set up, this river or one tile rivers will not live. Because of course during a drought, there's no way all this water will stay here. We'd have to have like a super massive reservoir built, similar to the one we have down here, and then manually control it so that it always keeps going lower and lower and lower and keeps the river flowing all year round, no matter if it's a drought or not. And that's pretty difficult to do, but it'd be super land efficient because then you wouldn't have to worry about any farmland anymore. It's all in the water. And you wouldn't have to build platforms on the water to utilize the space either. Let's take a quick look again though. The cattails, I think, need to be ground down in a grist mill, and then they're turned into crackers. So the flour, it's a one to one, makes sense. And then it goes into the bakery to make four crackers. Mmm, I wonder how efficient that is. Yeah, if one wheat goes to five bread, and one cattail thing goes to four crackers, I wonder what the value is. Oh, who cares about the value? It's not showing up properly right now but it helps with all the buffs. Yeah, that's the whole point, it's for more buffs. So chestnuts, more strength, the crackers, extra speed, that's actually so good. Spatterdock, life expectancy, and maple pastries carrying speed again. Very interesting, so you definitely want a good variety if you can. So seems cool, you have the cattails there, we have the spatterdock there, and we could do some cool stuff with that later on. There's a bunch of other stuff still added to the update though. That's just one small thing. There's a brand new tree, a chestnut tree. And this takes 24 days, gives you four logs, and then three chestnuts. Whereas a maple tree gets you eight logs, three maple syrup, and 30 days to grow. Oh, and I was about to say, then there's no point to pine trees, but now there's pine resin. So all the trees have something new except for the birch trees, which are just fast. Huh. What's pine resin for? Uh, one second, you know what? First, let's get rid of all of these trees here, and we're just gonna plant a bunch of the new ones. Now, chestnut time, let's go! How do they look? Odd and gray, I can't really tell. They look very similar to the other trees, except they're more green, okay, gotcha. Well, get them in there, please. Wow, they super do look like a tree. Amazing. And each of these trees, again, makes three chestnuts, so we got food and lumber from one location. And the chestnuts are grilled. So, if each tree produces three chestnuts, one chestnut, once it's grilled, makes two roasted chestnuts. So one tree is like 1.5 food each, which is pretty good. But I think the real overpowered thing in this update is what's up with these maple trees. Maple syrup, unfathomably good. Because in the bakery, we can make these little pastry things. And the pastries are simple. You need the wheat flour, which you always are gonna have, right? A little bit of extra maple syrup, and some wood. And there you go, three pastries. And sure, that might not be as efficient as bread, but it's something you can easily add on. Like most of your bakeries can be for bread, and then you have some making pastries. And the mix of both really helps out the beavers. Because the beavers, get a speed buff, yeah, carrying speed buff, on top of the bread, which gives them another 20% speed buff. And when you have mega districts like this that take up half the map, carrying a log from A to, sheesh, B, takes a long time. You need those beavers to be quick, quick, agile, and vicious. Well, not very vicious, but you know what I mean. So already I'm just getting started on like a storage area for everything. We'll store the maple syrup and we'll store the buns. We won't have a huge supply of them, but enough of them. Definitely enough of them. And I think that about covers all the new food updates, but that's only like one part of it. There is so much more. Like we kind of saw, these new pine trees have the resin on them. And with the pine resin, you can build a variety of awesome things like a tapper's shack. Oh, and this gets maple syrup and the pine resin. All right, well, let's unlock that. Let's get rid of a couple trees here, or how big is this building? Oh, it's so small. I love it though. Very cool design. Nah, just place that bad boy down here, all right? Uh-oh, 
I placed it down. Did I break the game? Please no. Oh, there we go. We're in an experimental build right now, so <laughs> well, the game might crash at any moment. A little scared about that. But what should be even more worrying is we're gathering now the maple syrup and this pine resin, right? Well, the maple syrup, I already got a plan for that. We have a new building being set up in the cooking district here. Then the resin, where do we want to store that? I feel like that could really clog up a lot of inventories. I hope they add in this game a way to like set a district's general rules for like everything. Like I could click on one of these warehouses and select all of them at once because I don't want any of them to have any of this pine resin stored except for very specific storage buildings. Like this one we're gonna place right here. That'd be preferred. Or maybe you'd like click on a warehouse and you could say this is the pine resin building. Something like that. I don't know. Anyway, what, what's even the point of having this resin stuff? What do we do with it? Wood workshop, we can make treated planks. Planks plus resin and time equals a treated plank. Okay. 250 horsepower as well? Sheesh. Okay. Strong boy. Let's build one. Oh my gosh, though. Dude, that looks crazy. I am a big fan. Huge fan, in fact. Uh, uh, our industrial district's a little busy. Is there anywhere we can put this, sir? How big is this? Four by two tiles large? Okay. Actually, I got a spot for this. We could get rid of this explosives factory. I'm sorry, the ultimate betrayal. And then we could put that in there. And wow, that really is a lot of horsepower, bud. 250 horsepower, that's the same as these shredders. Goodness, we must not need a lot of them. But then, what do we need the treated planks for? Oh yeah, the best change in the whole game. They added infinite metal now. So we're in before, in the ye olden days, the only way to get metal in the game was to go and find ruins. So there's only a handful of ruins in a map like this. And then once you harvest them, all the metal can be gone. But now we have mines. We can play Minecraft. It's happening. <laughs> no. 4,000 science though. 300 treated planks. 600 gears. Oh my gosh, that's so expensive. Okay, well, the mines are super rare. We can't build a lot of them. So I guess that makes sense. And what I mean by we can't build a lot of them, these are very special buildings. You can't just place a iron mine or an ore mine anywhere. It has to be on a specific ore vein that only spawns in in the new update. So welcome to a brand new world that is made in a new experimental mode and you can see the change and what's going on. So you still have these ruins everywhere, right? Except now if you go really far, like to the edge of the map almost, there's gonna be these new types of ruins, which are kind of like bunkers. Well, they look like the remnants of a bunker maybe, but it's called a metal deposit and you can put a mine on this and then extract metal forever. Or not exactly metal, but instead ore. And the ore has to be used in a smelter. And with that smelter, we get infinite metal blocks and we can build all the crazy metal structures infinitely now, instead of where in the current version, we're very limited. So we could have these large metal platforms everywhere and we'll get to build as many suspension bridges as we want, which is a fantastic change. Very happy about that. And for curiosity's sake, what does the smelter look like? It looks like a smelter. <laughs> I would have expected that. Yeah, same size as the other new building. Looks pretty neat. Takes up 320 horsepower. So this is the most power intensive thing in the game. That's nuts. You'd need more than one of these engines to run one smelter. But I guess you really only need one in the world, right? So fair enough. Ah, oh, but that's super exciting because these platforms can be used for a lot of really cool things. I haven't messed around with them too much yet just because I know we have a limited amount. Like we have right now, how many metal blocks? About a thousand. Each of these platforms takes 500. So yeah, we could only build one right now. So I've been so careful with that. But yeah, if we had mines, we could just build infinite. But since this map was made in an earlier version, there are no mines. But I might be able to spawn one in, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Ah, but all of this leads to my favorite thing in the update. My actual real for realies favorite thing. The mechanical water pump. Oh my gosh. We can pump water up cliffs mechanically. 
They take 700 horsepower? I think that's a bug. There's no way. But who cares, right? We can have these reverse waterfalls built. These are going to be used in this giant pit city area. I got a plan. There's going to be some cool stuff going on in here. And it all will be made possible because we'll have these pumps here. Uh, but yeah, they take the metal blocks, the treated wood, bunch of gears, eh, expensive as anything. The most expensive thing in the game, pretty much. But if we're gonna spend our metal blocks on anything, it's gonna be on these, because they're, they're just too cool, man. Ah, so, so many cool things gonna be happening very soon. But wait, there's even more! I didn't even know about this stuff, but check it. They added a bunch of stuff to the leisure category. So, there's the carousel. We just haven't unlocked that and messed with it yet, but that's been around forever. But they added in a Lido. That's a cool name, a Lido. Neat. A mud bath. Uh, okay. And an observatory. All right. So the beavers can learn about space. Space traveling beavers confirmed soon. TM. <laughs> Dude, if that actually happens, I'm going to be so happy. Uh, anyway, Lido. Oh, I see. It's kind of like a, a dock where most of it has to be in the water. Come on. Where can we place this? Over here? No. God, this is difficult. There we go. So there's like a little dock, a ladder, and like a designated swimming zone. Okay, that's cool. I've seen these before in real life. I just didn't know the real name. Oh, uh, we have the mud bath. Ick. You know, apparently there's a huge appeal for this in the real world, but I, I don't know, man. <laughs> One day I guess I'll try it, but I don't know. And finally, though, there's the observatory. Huge building. Huge. Knowledge, observatory, this gives fun mud bath and fun Lido. I wonder what bonuses these things have. There's a beaver in this crazy place. What even happens here? Mud bath, extra working speed, extremely good. We're gonna be making a lot of those. Lido, a little extra working speed, but hey, it looks cool. And knowledge now has books, which are super good because they give a 20% buff to working speed. And the observatory is 10%, which is fine. Books are a process. Observatories, you build them and you forget about them. Cool stuff. And look at that. And beavers are all swimming and vibing in the water now. That's cool. Oh, and that's a ladder to get down there. Uh, these uh, mud baths, they actually are standing above ground, so it would have been better in the future to like blast a hole for them, but you know. <laughs> it's nice to have them. Look at, the, look at that guy. He's so happy. And he's gone. Goodbye. Yeah, I like these. We're going to build a lot of these, I'm sure. And then another leader over here, that was way too far. Observatory moves around a little bit. It can hold a bunch of people, so it kind of works like a temple. Like, the beavers, they come and they go and they vibe and do whatever. That's neat. Again, I really hope they add spacecraft to this game. That would be the greatest thing in the whole wide world. Anyway, that is now all the new stuff. I am pretty sure. Any more surprises? No. Tribute of Ingenuity, big statue. No, that's it. Oh, so much new stuff to play around with. And I have some huge plans for everything now. Oh, the underwater growables, this huge flat space, the giant city we can make in this pit, the extra pumps that can pump water vertically. Dude, 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 so much to do. <laughs> Next time though. For now, that's gonna be all. So I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching. But have a fantastic rest of your day and bye-bye.